Guys, I don't even know where to begin with this one. All right, let's discuss, if we have to. Yes, queen! Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button, and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Come on, do it. Do it! I apologize if my reviews for She-Hawk have been a little less insightful than other reviews I've done. But the truth is, is that there's not a whole lot for me to talk about, and it's becoming more and more difficult for me to take this show seriously. Short-ass episodes or not, it is a literal waste of everyone's time. I understand that some people may enjoy it for its quirkiness, and I'm glad you do. But if we're being honest with ourselves and we're attempting to be critical, there is absolutely nothing about this show worth praising. We ain't found shit! It's a comedy that's not funny. It's a courtroom show with absolutely no intrigue. And it's a superhero story without excitement. It literally feels like the creators had absolutely no direction when putting this thing together. This episode primarily deals with Jen trying to get laid, and yet another pointless legal case. That's it. The episode begins with a terrible magician named Donnie Blaze, not to be confused with Johnny Blaze, who uses the mystic arts and creates portals in his act without proper training. And this causes, apparently, everyone's favorite character, Wong, to go and obtain She-Hulk's legal services. With the goal of getting a cease and desist letter sent to Donnie. Because use of the mystic arts could be dangerous in the wrong hands. Do any of you give a shit? I know I don't. It's a good thing that they have things like special effects to distract people, because otherwise people might actually realize how fucking stupid these Case of the Week subplots are. She-Hulk breaks the fourth wall again this week and talks about how Wong's appearance in this episode, because of his popularity... I'm very popular. I'm sure you are. We'll give this show some Twitter armor for a week or so. The sad part is, is that's probably true because people are easily distracted by mediocre quirky characters now, and I think Wong would fall under that category. But also, if you're really thinking about it, the Twitter crowd overall is actually enjoying this show. So in reality, it doesn't really matter. You see, She-Hulk plays into what satisfies the social media crowds. That being conversations and entertainment that lack any kind of substance. So yes, this show certainly does know its audience. We give them what they want! Jen's friend is trying to get her a date, so they create a profile for her on a dating app. She gets very few matches, and the few matches she does get actually turn out to be douchebags. No surprise there. Also, it felt like it was kind of fucked up what they were trying to say about the importance of appearances, but more on that in a moment. Go fuck yourself, pretty boy. There's a moment on one of her dates where her and the guy have this stare down when the check is delivered to their table, which he ultimately doesn't pay, of course. And this is portrayed as a bad thing in the show. Now, I think it's a bad thing, but I always thought that modern women didn't want their shit paid for. I mean, they don't need no man, right? I felt like this was kind of sending mixed messages a little bit. Eventually, Jen gets desperate for some dick and she changes her profile to be She-Hulk. And she instantly gets a lot of matches because apparently everyone wants to bang She-Hulk. So she goes on a few more shitty dates until she finally finds someone that she is attracted to. Which again is the overall theme of this episode apparently. And they eventually go back to her place and after a brief distraction from Wong, where She-Hulk helps him dispose of some demons that Donnie accidentally released, she returns home, picks up her date like a baby, and apparently manhandles him in the bedroom. And no one ever touched my feet before. That's a huge bitch! The funniest part about all of this is that the next morning, he sees her just as Jen, and he decides to completely blow her off. No, don't like that. Is this show trying to tell us something? Because it feels like they called Jen unattractive at least twice in this episode, maybe more? Or maybe it's that all men are shallow. Yeah, it's probably the second one. Either way, it seems like an odd creative choice. I never in a million years thought that this was the type of content we would get when we would ultimately get a She-Hulk show. I actually feel like this show is doing more harm than good, and actually regressing female characters. Yes, queen! This episode concludes with her finding out she is being sued for the She-Hulk name. So there we have it, the next stupid ass legal case is already set up for next week. How excited is everyone for that shit? I've now watched only three Marvel Disney Plus shows because that's all I can muster up the strength to do, WandaVision and Moon Knight being the other two, and this show is by far the worst after four episodes. That's right, it stinks! 
And if you watch my Moon Knight reviews, you know how I felt about that. But She-Hulk, unlike those shows, actually has zero redeemable qualities. It's an incompetent show made by incompetent writers who work for an incompetent studio. And I will never understand how anyone could defend this bullshit. Surprise, surprise, the incels came out in full force last week to rage about She-Hulk twerking. Why is it that Star-Lord dancing isn't considered cringe? Oh, that's right, it's because you're misogynistic man-babies, that's why. You just hate to see strong females expressing their sexuality and having fun. Maybe you should think about this the next time you try to criticize a female-led show. Otherwise, you might be the next one to get cancelled. Y'all be cool. Right on.